Yes, people, welcome to Pros Only Sports. You're here with myself, Roland, and welcome back to another episode of United State of Mind. Anthony has signed for Manchester United. All the deal has been agreed at least, and we're on our way to getting that official confirmation from the club. Before we do anything tonight and break anything down, make sure you're hitting that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you're new. Hit that notification bell as well and follow the socials right down there at the bottom of your screen. Anthony has signed for Manchester United, as I mentioned before. He signed a six-year deal up until 2028. It makes him Manchester United's second most expensive ever signing. And it also makes him, I believe, the fourth most expensive signing in the Premier League. Let me give you the rundown on Anthony. So he's 22 years old, a Brazilian international. Obviously, he is a winger predominantly on the right-hand side. In terms of his club honours, he's won the um, Eredivisie twice, the Dutch Cup once, and obviously got Olympic gold for Brazil at the last Olympic Games. Now, if we talk about Anthony in terms of just what he offers as a player, we can talk about his passing ability. Obviously, coming from that Ajax system, he needs to have a great level of passing, um, being able to find his teammates at any point under any sort of pressure on the pitch as well. And especially for somebody in an attacking position, he doesn't want to be able to, he has to be able to find his teammates and not lose the ball. And so we can see that with some of his ability with the give and go. Um, holding on to the ball, and especially when you couple that with his dribbling ability, he needs to be able to hold on to the ball if he's going to be able to, to do a trick, try and beat a man, and also continue the attack so that he can find one of his teammates further along in the phase of play. Um, key passes, obviously, that is the, the, the key here for him as well. As a player on the in the wide areas, especially cutting inside, he needs to be able to make a key pass so he can find his teammates in a in an advanced position to be able to go and score a goal. Um, and he has that uh, he has that in his locker and he has that in abundance. In terms of finishing, we've seen in a numerous amount of clips. Don't be fooled by the goal contributions because sometimes that's not always going to tell the, the the true picture of a player. Um, but in terms of finishing, we've seen on many occasions he, he, him able to cut inside onto his left foot and curl round, curl one round the keeper. And he can do that potentially in the Premier League too, but we've seen him do it in the Eredivisie. Um, dribbling, obviously one of his main strong suits that everybody seems to be focusing on right now, um, especially with some of the compilations that we've been seeing on social media. Um, he's he's a dribbler. He's, he's somebody that's kind of a throwback to individualism in football. You know, some of, some of the players that some of us grew up on, you know, um, they, they had the ability to just basically do something out of nothing, get past the player and create something. And he seems to come from that kind of cloth. Now, is he going to be able to have the time and space to do that in the Premier League? That's something we can explore a little bit later as we discuss. But it's, I believe because he can do it and because he feels confident enough to do it and he, 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 he truly believes in his ability, I don't, I don't mind seeing it. I mean, we've seen a lot of... Um, you know, some people may liken it to a bit of showboating and we've seen a lot of discourse about that since Richarlison's um, um, incident on the, on the weekend. But in all honesty, it's something I like to see and I hope that he can bring that to the Premier League and it, he won't, it won't be stifled. I hope it won't be looked down upon, but we have to wait and see. Um, long shots is another one of his um, strong suits. Um, he's somebody who um, can take shots from, um, from, from distance. And, you know, I think, I think we've been lacking that a lot um, for, for Manchester United. You know, like we haven't had anybody that really been able to do that since Paul Scholes. And somebody who 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 feels confident to take a shot from 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 distance, we kind of need that on our side. We don't really have that really anymore. Like you don't have midfielders that are taking long shots anymore. Is it because there's a lack of space now in the Premier League? I don't know, but um, he has that ability as well to be able to take shots from distance and very powerful shots at that. Um, through balls, I mean, that's something that I'm sure in his time at Ajax, he, he had to perfect, you know, because because some of the possession um, stats that they had um, at the time um, with Ajax under Eric Ten Hag, it kind of showed you what they were doing in terms of trying to, to, to get themselves into positions so that they could put through balls into whichever forward runs onto or runs into the space. And so that's another one of his, his strong suits. And if Ten Hag is able to implement the way he wants to play, the style he wants to play on this team, his ability on through balls is going to be required. And we've seen already some of the stuff that he's been able to do for Ajax, for um, for Ale, um over the last couple of years as well, for the goals that he's been able to score. So, you know, hopefully he can bring that to Manchester United as well. And obviously crossing. Now, obviously him being a winger, 
he has to be able to cross the ball. And I think it's something we've been lacking as well for Manchester United over the years, um, over the last, like, let's say, several years, to be honest with you, maybe since Moyes. Um, people crossing the ball, like, you know, Manchester United, you know, it's, we've, we've, been, we've been known to, to produce wingers, um, to play with wingers. The pitch at Old Trafford is made for wingers. And although um, Anthony does cut inside and he likes to come inside, you know, I I believe he has the ability to go outside as well, and so that should be, that should be understated. So let's see if um, he'll be able to bring that to the Premier League, and it obviously it depends on who's who's going to be playing up top as well. Because if we don't have that kind of striker, maybe there won't be any use for those crosses. However, if we do somehow bring on, bring in a striker before the end of the transfer window, you know, if Ronaldo decides to stay, leave, whatever. Um, his ability on crossing is going to be important for that potential striker, whoever it may be. But it is something that's in his locker. And if there needs to be any variation in what needs to be done, he's, he's going to be able to offer that. Now let's talk about some of the weaknesses that he has in his game. And I think there's only one real weakness that I've seen and I think is just kind of well stated. Um, his defensive contribution. Now, He's gonna to have to track back in the Premier League. I just, I, I feel like in the area of Vizy, it's a little bit easier. You can, you can kind of be a bit lax. You know, I feel like it's a lot open, um, and also playing for one of the stronger teams, you're gonna have a lot of the ball, and so it's, um, it's a lot. You, you can, you could take your foot off the gas essentially. But in the Premier League, you can't do that, and so I feel that's an area he needs to work on. He needs to be able to track back, help out his fellow fullback, who, as of right now, is going to be looking like Diogo Dallo. So you know, he's going to have to be able to work on that. You know, you know, he has to be able to track back, help his fellow, his fellow fullback out, defend when we don't have the ball and don't stay up the pitch, leaving your teammates short. And I'm sure that's something that Eric Ten Hag would have already assessed in terms of just the Premier League itself, how fast pace it is, how intense it is, and how every single person who's on that field for you needs to be able to do their job, especially without the ball. But yeah, um, that's basically a roundup of his, his strengths and his weaknesses. Let's just talk about his style of play a little bit. Um, he likes to cut inside, as I mentioned before, and obviously that's going to be key um, um, in terms of creating a lot of opportunities, um, in terms of giving goals, one-twos, and, um, and and being able to go round his attackers to be able to get in behind. Um, and he likes to play a lot of short passes, and I feel like somebody who already knows the way Eric Ten Hag wants to play comes into the side, like how we've seen with um, Lissandro Martinez, um, Anthony's going to come in, be able to play those short passes, those short, crisp one-touch passes that, you know, Eric Ten Hag is trying to implement on this team. And it kind of makes Eric Ten Hag's job a lot easier by having another player who's already played under him and already knows how to play as well. So under him. So, you know, that's another one of um, his style. That's a key part to his style of play. Um, and he doesn't dive into tackles, which is also good because obviously, you know, if he, if, if he came here with that kind of reputation, he would be targeted by referees and potentially could get bookings and red cards and whatnot. So, you know, it's it's, it's going to be, um, uh, it's actually pretty good that he doesn't dive into tackles and hopefully, you know, that that can continue so that he can stay out of trouble in the Premier League. Um, but let's talk about some of the pros and the cons of um, his um, time, um, uh, of, of this transfer, sorry. Um, but yeah, um offers a sense of excitement um, and uh, flair, imagination and creativity that I feel like the squad is desperately lacking. Like his, dri his dribbling ability um, uh, and wanting to be able to beat an opposing player is something we don't really have in our squad apart from Sancho, like, you know, and then potentially Martial as well when he's fit. Like, we don't have many of those kind of players in those attacking areas. And it's good to add another player that does that. Somebody that gets the bums off their seats, you know, like, we've we've lacked that in a long time. You know, like, you know, somebody that's very quick, direct, that is willing to beat a man. Like, we haven't had that in a minute. And, you know, having somebody like him, the price tag, obviously, is a big thing as well. It's going to be interesting to see how he actually, um, he actually does that. Is he going to be getting fans off their seats? Whenever he gets into an attacking position, because you have the the faith that he's going to be able to beat somebody on that on that right hand side, so you know it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And hopefully, him coming there, he comes onto the pitch um, against Arsenal on Sunday. I don't know if he'll start the game, but if he if he gets onto the pitch, hopefully he has that kind of impact that we've seen over the years with some of the other wingers that played for the club too. Um, Ten Hag got his man. Um, you know, he knows the manager. Um, he knows exactly what his role is going to be in the team. So I feel like his transition 
into the team is going to be a lot easier. Maybe not into the league, but into the team specifically in the way that the team wants to play. It's going to be easy for him. And and that relationship that he has with Ten Hag looks it looks to seem it seems to be a very um close relationship. They have a strong relationship with each other, they trust each other. So that's going to be interesting to see how that translates in the Premier League and in this new team uh for Anthony. Um I feel like he has that sense of arrogance to play at the top level. Like he's got the right mentality, right attitude, somebody that that constantly believes in themselves um, no matter what. So if anything, for some reason, goes wrong, he's able to keep fighting. And I think that maybe comes from where he comes from. Obviously, he comes from the favelas in Brazil. And, you know, I feel like in life, if you, you're in a circumstance and you want to change something for yourself, you, you work hard to be able to make sure that you do so. And it looks like he's been able to do that to, to basically propel himself into this position. And that is the right attitude. If you're already doing that in life, it can potentially translate that onto the field and, and he's going to continue that. And I feel like that level of arrogance, that right, that right mentality and attitude is going to stand him in good stead, especially as he adjusts to the Premier League and how tough it's going to be, you know? And I feel like he's, never, he's not going to underestimate it as well. So, you know, and also he's not going to allow any of the outside pressures get to his head. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, but you, I feel like that's a that's a pro for him. Now let's move on to the cons. There's huge expectations um, due to the price tag. Now we've seen how the price tag can weigh a player down, and I don't know if it's going to weigh him down. It's it's kind of up to interpretation. It's up. We have to wait and see. Um, but there's going to be a lot of pressure from the media, from rival fans as well, that if he doesn't hit the ground running, which um, if he doesn't do that, it's going to be a problem. And, you know, we don't want it to be another big money flop, you know, in the Premier League. And so, you know, obviously, as I said, um, you know, United could have potentially gotten this deal a lot cheaper had they negotiated with Ajax a lot earlier in the window because it would have given Ajax more time to be able to source a replacement. So they could have been a bit, uh, there could have been a bit of leeway with the fee. But because you leave it so late in the window, literally signing today, so obviously negotiations, negotiations would have happened over the last couple of weeks. Like, you know, it would have been you know, a pretty, it would, it's just going to leave you short. So, you know, I actually not going to have to scramble for a replacement. I feel like they already would have had somebody um, in mind, but it's still too late in the window, but it is what it is. Um, I say this is a bit of a con, you know, he has a similar profile to that of Sancho, but just on the other side of the pitch. So, um, although, and at the same time, Sancho has been operating on the right-hand side when Rashford has been playing on the left. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works now. You know, who out of those three is going to be sitting down? I feel like Anthony will have a place. And Sancho costs a lot of money too. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Is Rashford going to be playing up front? Are the two of them going to be playing together, Sancho and, and Anthony on either side? That's going to be interesting to see how that how that works. But I feel like they are of a similar profile. As much as I trust Ten Hag and his judgment in terms of the players and how to utilise them, um, could you say that um, symmetry is 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 good or should there be variations should there be one person who constantly goes outside of his man to cross a ball in and blows past a player very pacey or, and and on the other side you have somebody who dribbles who comes inside who who who, who tries one twos given given goes like you know it, it's going to be interesting to see how that balance um, strikes up you know i mean having a similar profile kind of does say that okay you're kind of getting your team together you know where Every, every single player in each position kind of does a similar thing. So that means there's a lot more synergy on the pitch. But at the same time, it could be they offer the same thing. And so we don't get a lot of variation in attack. And maybe sometimes attacks will break down in the same situations every single time because the player profiles are the same. I mean, it's one of those ones. That's, that's something that we're going to have to look into as the season goes on. Um, another, another con for me is, you know, Eredivisie players in recent times have str generally struggled when, they, when they've taken a step up to a higher level. So you look at the likes of Bergwin, um, goes to Spurs for a lot of money, doesn't really cut it in the Premier League. Um, Donny van der Beek at our own club right now, you know, he's come from Ajax, albeit under not the best circumstances, but, you know, he struggled in the Premier League and he went on loan to Everton and really didn't really kick up trees there. Um, you know, Hakim Ziyech, who's come from Ajax, you know, who potentially could go and replace Anthony. Another player that's come from Ajax, comes to the Premier League, doesn't really hit the ground running. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I've mentioned this before. The Eredivisie isn't as strong of a league as what it used to be. Um, 
you know, it's now a breeding ground for youngsters who are trying to make the step up to a, a higher league. And so they don't really get a good level of competition throughout that league. And so when they actually finally meet competition, they tend to struggle. So, I mean, it's, 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 wait, it's something that we have to wait and see as, again with Anthony to see if he has the ability to step up to this level and not struggle. You know, some of these players come here and they basically drowned. He's young and so you probably have some time to learn. But for that price tag, I don't think there's going to be a lot of patience um, from our own fan base as well as rivals and the media and all of that. So he has to kind of hit the ground running. But we have to wait and see. And finally, in terms of a con, um, will he get time and space to play his game in the Premier League? I mean, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, you know, the Premier League is, is a very intense league. You know, you really don't have a lot of time on the ball. We've seen that with players, even in our own side, like Paul Pogba, he, he wanted ages on the ball and just never got it. You know, I feel like the way Anthony plays, like, he's not going to want the ball, like, for, for ages. But is he going to have the time and space to be doing the dribbling that we, we've we seen him do in the Eredivisie? I'm not too sure. Um, but it's, once again, something that we have to wait and see about because hopefully he will actually be able to adapt his game a little bit so that he's not going to take too much time on the ball and adapts to the to, to the intensity of the Premier League quickly enough so that he doesn't struggle. Do you know what I mean? So let's just see what happens there. Um, but look, at the end of the day, we've got our fifth summer signing um, and, you know, it's an exciting player, somebody that's going to hopefully get us all off of our seats, off of the edge of our seats. And hopefully he'll be doing some, some good stuff for Manchester United on that right-hand side. But I'm just going to wrap it up right here, right now. Thank you for watching, people. Make sure you hit the comments and let me know about Anthony. What do you think of the signing? Um, how do you think he's going to contribute to the team? And we'll be back for another episode of United State of Mind very, very soon. Make sure you're hitting that like button, that subscribe button as well if you're new. Hit that notification bell as well. Follow the socials down below. Peace.